Hey, Leanne. Hey, Martin. How's it going this morning? Oh, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Uh, quite a busy week last week, no? Definitely a busy week. Lots of things accomplished, but very busy. Yeah, lots of things to celebrate too, right? Yeah. Parents, man, did they jump on board quickly and start participating? Amazing. Yeah, they were they were in all of the teachers' websites. I got loads of emails from them, really participating well. Yeah. Really, I really thank parents for supporting their child in this and supporting the teacher because it's a growing process. I know uh, there's lots to learn about the amount of expectations we're posting in, in on the website um, and any feedback that parents have provided teachers has been received well and, and we've been adapting to that. Yeah, it's been very helpful feedback as well. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's definitely true that we all have a lot to learn, parents included. So it's been good to hear from them and hear their experiences at home. Yeah, we know that this is a challenging time right now, um, especially with new restrictions posted yesterday. Yeah, I know. I know how it was at my house. Um, you know, the little earthquake that we had and those new restrictions being announced with the curfew. Stressful. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they needed some attention during the day, and I'm sure our parents are feeling the same. Yeah, yeah. It's going to definitely increase some of the basic day-to-day -day challenges that we face at home. And, and so uh, it makes sense that, that we as a, a school are considering that and integrating that into how we plan our day for, for students. Yeah, I think that's, that's really smart. And I think parents will appreciate having some breathing room built into the schedule for just for them to take care of each other and their children. Yeah, and teachers need this too. We forget, you know, we our, our teachers in the middle of the same situation and, and to be able to uh, spend enough time with their families or have enough time to plan and take care of their basic needs during the week is right. really important as well. Yeah, and I know they're also, one of the things that I'm hearing from teachers is that they're really wanting to make individual contact with their with their students as much as possible. And that's that's a hard thing to do remotely. So it takes, everything takes that little bit longer for them to do as well and to do it well. Yeah. It's, it's a little harder, definitely, in elementary where there's not that direct contact with students all the time. That's right. Without the email. Yeah. A lot more is based, based on the teachers and the parents to, to be in touch and, and make that connection. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. But, you know, we're adapting every day. We welcome the feedback and we hope parents keep sending us that feedback. Yeah. Uh, it will so, continue to evolve and morph and grow. It's a living, breathing document, really, that we're working on together. It's the, we're, we're building, I heard this expression, we're building the airplane as we fly it. And, that's right, um, exactly right. Everything related to COVID right now is, is so true in that. Um, uh, but, you know, the, last week we, we faced many challenges and we overcame them all, right? True, yes. Yes, we did. Yeah. I think, I think it's a lot remember to, we to get, Remember we needed to get, by the way, first, this is one of our challenges, isn't it? We had to, we had to start talking to each other via video chats remotely. Yeah. Um, last week, we needed to get iPads and Chromebooks out to parents quickly. And thanks to our whole tech department, I won't even name anybody in particular, and our tech department, our school, uh, our office staff, they were all out there. And all but four iPads were delivered to parents on Tuesday, so that was wonderful. That's actually really amazing to think about the coordination and organization of that, and then the response of the parents to come so quickly and pick up the devices. That's really amazing that that was able to happen like that. Yeah, and it's really facilitated what we're trying to do uh, with, with students and, and continue their education at home. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. there were a couple unforeseen little glitches, tech glitches with the iPads, right? The, mm -hmm. the way that the website was set up and the, doc, the Google Docs links weren't working on iPads. So we needed to yeah. update the website quickly within two days. And that was, I know, troubling for some people and we needed to be flexible and adaptable then. And then at the same time, those it helped when we had the iPads were logged into a Google account. And so we send, sent those off this weekend. Uh, lots of adapting and lots of mm -hmm. moving parts. Within this mm -hmm. context of Cayman Islands right now, I know it's so challenging. It really is. A lot of kind of turning on a dime. Imagine how nice it would have been to have those two, those two days we had hoped to have at school where we could have tested all these things and run through yep. the kids. Yep. 
but I think we did a good job anyway of just kind of uh, adapting, as you say, and changing as we need to do. Yeah, things we were we were definitely planned to some degree uh, early in 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 March, and actually we started thinking about it in February. But I, who would know how quickly things would evolve and and all the little pieces that we would need? And we're learning mm -hmm. that by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And then this week, you know, we come into this week uh, with high hopes and, and a positive mindset. And we've already seen a couple of quick challenges, haven't we? We sure have. Yep. I think they're, and they'll continue. We just have to, we just have to adapt when they come and, yep. and respond to what our, what our families need. What are the, some of the main challenges that we, we anticipate facing and tackling this week with home learning in elementary? So I think one of the main things would be, um, just kind of growing our awareness that although our children are very adept at using the apps and things in class with our support, it's a little bit harder for them not to have the teacher's instruction. So maybe reducing the number of apps that we use in a, in a single. Yeah. It's much less efficient, right? It's, it's yeah. our, our teachers' hearts are so huge as parents are seeing because they're sending so much. They want the they want students to be engaged and give them feedback. Our specialist mm -hmm. teachers and our learning support teachers uh, have mm -hmm. been beating down the door to get in touch with their students. But with every mm -hmm. new piece, there seems to be a little too much pressure, a little bit too much on everyone's plate. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. and it's so hard mm -hmm. for us to say no to all the teachers who, who I know. want their students. It's, it's also true that different families have different needs at this time, you know, depending on what their own circumstances are. Sometimes those offers of more, more learning, more support feels yeah. like much, and sometimes it feels just about right. So maybe um, reaching out to parents and, and hearing what their situation is would help also. Yeah. Well, and not only differences in family households holds differences with how students learn. And we have students that are more organized or more efficient or can understand uh, a big chunk of instructions without it being broken down and some who are really struggling right now for that and so that's true uh, and of course without the regular scaffolds that we have in place during the school day um, that yeah. makes it even harder yeah and so some of the things that we're going to start developing or have started developing our teachers are definitely learning uh, they're heroes in some regard right they, mm. they, they know what they've trained to be is face to face in the classroom and now they realize that delivering online they have to become almost web designers and uh, mm -hmm. understand sequencing and embedding videos technicians yeah there's a lot of learning for the teachers as well it's it's yeah. a whole new world yeah. yeah it's something like what we do in the classroom in many ways yeah and so this this growing this learning this evolving is going to continue for some time now but they've made made tremendous growth in just four days i can't believe it's only been four days i know it seems crazy that it's only been four days and the other thing that that really is is quite something is the amount of communication our teachers have had with parents and reaching out and responding to concerns that are at a really stressful time for everyone so i'm really thankful that the teachers have taken that on board well, and just thinking about the, the changing context and the, of K-Man, mm. you know, it really is important right now, all of us, and, and our teachers have received this message as well, is patience and just slow down. Nothing is as urgent as our lives right now. That's um, right. Yeah. We definitely want, we, I know we added specialists this week in our, the goodness of our hearts and we wanted kids to have access to that, but th that's still in flux. We can, we can move it in a different direction if we need to yeah. if it's just one yeah. more thing too much per day you know maybe we look at something like a specialist day we don't we're we're going to debate this and based yeah. on feedback figure out what's best for for everyone yeah i mean obviously we want we want to support parents in, in keeping kids learning keeping them busy and also i think keeping some sense of stability for children it's important that they maintain that contact with their teachers and with the school just yeah. so they yeah. feel safe in many ways, you know, support from other adults that they're used to having in their lives. But at the same time, we won't, don't want it to be perceived as too much by them or their parents or their teachers or anyone. Yeah, I mean, if we're we're moving into Google Meets in grade three to five for that reason, so that there can be this contact between students and teachers. Yeah. But the tremendous uh, effort and and time consumption on teachers to make that happen, we can't keep 
doing that and delivering these lessons as well. And, and I don't think there's a need to if we design it correctly. Yeah, but it'll be important then to, to sort of have that rolled out very thoughtfully, yeah. very slowly so that the children and, and you know those parents who may not have the tech skills or maybe it's a nanny um, supporting yeah. the child from home, that needs to be manageable for everyone. Well, and we've seen this already where some of the great three to five teachers who have been comfortable on their own, because we don't have tech support right now for that, we're focused on transitioning into yeah. home. Yeah. Uh, some of those more comfortable teachers have started and they're still struggling. They're very tech savvy and they're still struggling at, at, at times, right? Learning it. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's not as simple with a group of children as it is with a group of adults, that's for sure. And the need for scheduling has come up in terms of yeah. we don't want two classes to be scheduled at the same time and have difficulty in a household. So mm -hmm. how do we schedule those Google Meets so that every it's understandable for everyone and manageable? That's right, yeah. And there's a lot of logistical parts to think about. I think that's one reason why we've talked about um, not doing Google Meets yet in kindergarten to grade two, You know, not until week four maybe where We've got into a little bit of a flow. Uh, teachers are, are more secure, have planned well in advance. Uh, and then we have had the time, we found the time somehow to train up and, and help people become comfortable and, and learn some strategies to be using with Google Meets. Right, exactly. And I really like the idea that um, someone brought up a couple of days ago about starting very simply with read alouds. You know, and it's yeah. kind of a optional piece sign. And if you can, um, just a quick 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you can see your teacher's face, get some live contact, um, yep. set a distance, hear a story, and then we can build from there as the children are more comfortable with it. Yeah, another simple strategy we saw with that, and again, in a couple weeks when everyone uh, has more time to work on that, but maybe a morning meeting instead of a, a asynchronous mm -hmm. video, they run a 15-minute morning meeting where they ask questions. But you can imagine in kindergarten, with the with the mute and the volume, that's yeah. going to be a lot on parents because kindergartners can't do that. So that's we're right. also yeah. conscious right now that the idea is we're hoping and it's and it's been a challenge to try to limit the the time that parents have to be engaging uh, during the lesson. Well, yeah, we know that's, that's really already been a challenge. It's really yeah. has been just the delivery model through a computer has been real difficult to manage. For sure, yeah. And I, I read an article, Leanne, I read an article, oh man, I, I can't remember where it was from, but they were talking about how just the fact that the whole world is now online in K to 12, and we're trying to adapt these live versions of our teaching online, um, we're actually changing a whole paradigm, because yeah. online teaching is just for university teaching, and That's it's right. so different what teachers are trying from K to 12 right now. That's true. And even if you think about the tools that are available, you think about them having been made available for distance le learning with older students, mostly adults, in fact, um, they're not really perfect for younger ones. So we have to work with them that makes sense for our younger students. Yeah, yeah. So some of the strategies we're hoping to, to continue to promote are to keep the tech simple, right, to try to continue to go through our Seesaw platform in terms of uploading. I know that's in K to two. In three to five, Google Google uh, Classroom has been really important in terms of organizing students' work and submissions, but that's still mm -hmm. taking from learning at different grade levels who didn't have that that's exposure. Right. Right? That's right, yeah. yeah. And even something as simple as the fact that a Chromebook clicks you out into a different window, creates this other tab, has been a challenge for the children because they end up with all these little tabs. So there's yeah. a lesson there, right? That's a lesson that we need to teach so that they yeah. can do that on their own. But it's, you know, something that we would do, would have done very naturally at school and wouldn't have anticipated being a problem at home. So little things. Yeah, and our teachers are starting to recognize that where they'll try to do both uh, a lesson and the tech at the same time. And they realize, hmm, let's slow down. We'll probably have to do today the tech and then tomorrow the lesson because yeah. we need to get the tech before we can deliver that lesson. Very true, yeah. Very Lots true. of moving parts. And it's, what's making this even more challenging is that we're 300 students in 300 different homes and, and 50 teachers in 50 homes, and we're all trying to collaborate and coordinate. Yeah, it's tough. It's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, we're getting good at video chat, aren't we? Getting used to it. <laughs> we are. We've done a lot of those in the last couple of days.
Yeah. I think it's, I think from this, this week is about really evolving into a state of like mindfulness and, and making sure that by the end of the week, um, we maintain comfortable workloads for, for everyone, for teachers and students and parents. And, and us, agree. we've been working 15 hour days like everyone else, uh, yeah. trying to yeah. glue this all together and, and help mm -hmm. uh, see it from 100 feet above. And so it's been yeah. an exciting process, but a tiring one at one at, at the yeah. same time. Exactly. And you know, that what you said is very true. I think for everyone right now as a community, as a school community and a larger one, our main priority right now is our mental health, just taking care of ourselves, making sure that we get through this very stressful time okay. And part of that for our kids is school. Part of it is maintaining that connection, but also um, ha not having that connection feel overwhelming. Yeah. You know, and one of the, it's our mindset in some ways. Yeah, I, kind of, I keep thinking about how we're all entering this trying to emulate a normal school day or, or normal school. And this is not normal school. And so we, once we can get our minds out of that box, we may mm -hmm. be able to find uh, that comfortable schedule. Yeah, that's a really good point. It is. It's. Uh, I know here at home, I think I was expecting that that first online lesson would suddenly make my kids feel okay about all this. But of course, that's not true. It doesn't. It still doesn't feel like it used to feel. So you're right. I think accepting the fact that it's different and making the best of it is a good is a good way to handle it. Yep. And and maybe trying to understand how it's different and and accept that it's different and mm -hmm. and figure out how to define that difference. Uh, that's part of our goal right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, good conversation about this upcoming week. Um, mm -hmm. I I just am so grateful for all the people in our community trying to make it work. I know. I just want everyone amazing. to know. I want everyone to know, teachers and parents and students, that uh, we are listening. This is a fluid conversation, and we're going to get there. Everyone needs to be positive and stay positive and, and keep sending the feedback. And we're going to get to a nice model which helps the students with a routine, a schedule of some degree, um, and, and continue learning. Because I, you know, the world has gone online, and this is the new form of, of how our teachers are going to be teaching right now. And we've accepted mm -hmm. that. Uh, but there's a lot of learning to get to the, to the end. But there's a lot of For learning. Sure. Yeah, and learning is not easy, and it's it's always a challenge, and it's always uncomfortable. So we just need to take care of each other while we do it. I, I like that expression. Learning is uncomfortable. Man, is it uncomfortable! It really is. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a good thing. We have to remember the the discomfort is is good because it takes us to a new place. So maybe who who should parents reach out to when they have questions? Because I wouldn't want all the questions to be in in one person's. Uh, uh, responsibility. So mm -hmm. I know they're reaching out to tech support with tech specific questions. Um, yes. But if it's about managing the, the, the workload and the and the energy that it takes, uh, maybe that's to our counselors. We have uh, a link on our elementary site for, uh, uh, sorry, on the, the home learning page to get to counselors. They have resources up online. Um, mm -hmm. They have their email information. They have times where they're willing to talk to you. I, I I think it's important that if, if parents are struggling, that they know that our uh, our counselors are also there to, to talk about it with them and find Absolutely. strategies. And I know um, having met with the counselors yesterday, a couple of times via Google Meets, they're, they're really wanting to do that because supporting the family generally is also supporting the child. So they're really, really wanting to talk to parents and help them through things. Yeah. Uh, also, I know our learning support, we've, we're just starting to build a schedule to support students who really need um, that additional support. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so they're going to reach out to their students and we're going to reach out to students who are not connecting, maybe not mm -hmm. turning in assignments, trying mm -hmm. to really connect with those families and see what they need. Because uh, yeah. again, it's different. It is. It's different for everyone. You know, it could be something as small as not having a printer at home. Or something as large as I've had to leave the country. You know, we just don't know well, where. Well, that's that. the funny thing about the printer thing is tech keeps getting questions about that, and and what well, it's kind of a miscommunication. Our teachers think some parents ask for content to be printable because they don't want to be on the screen, and then we sent it and saying sometimes that you can print this, but the devices from school don't print to their home printers, and no. so that's just a 
so it's it's a challenge. We're gonna we're figure that one out too. But yeah, yeah so counselors are there for you. Uh, tech support for tech specific questions. Teachers, be mindful of teachers' schedules. Uh, please read all the instructions. Look for information. I know it's sometimes challenging to to decipher, uh, yeah. but we want our teachers also to have a normal schedule and be done by four and be able to go to the grocery store before nine when it closes now before curfew mm -hmm. uh, right we need to really be mindful of our schedules yeah we need to just take care of everyone don't we <laughs> make sure that everyone has the space they need great all right well here's to week two let's see how it goes <laughs> working yeah. together yeah um, and we'll check in again for week three Sounds good. It's going to be another busy day. I'll see you yeah. in the next. All right. Take care. Thank you, Leanne. Bye. Bye, Martin.